Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Apple India Limited. Second quarter and half year ended FY 2022 earnings conference call hosted by Prabodhas Leeladas. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Aniket Pandey from Prabhudas Leeladhar. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Janet. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Prabhudas Leeladhar, we welcome you all to Q2 and H1FI 22 conference call of Apple India Limited. I take this opportunity to welcome the management of Apple India Limited, represented by Mr. Anuj Khanna Soham, who is Chairman, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the company, and Mr. Kapil Bhutani, who is Chief Financial and Operations Officer of the company. Before we begin with the discussion, I would like to remind Remind you that some of the statements made in today's conference call may be forward looking in nature and may involve some risk and uncertainty. Kindly refer to slide 21 of the company's earning presentation for a detailed disclaimer. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Anish Kanna Soham for his opening remarks. Thanks and over to you, Anish. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining the call today. I trust all of you are keeping in good health. Apple delivered a landmark performance anchored on our entrepreneurial culture, tech innovation, and continuous execution focus on sustainable value creation, powered by our Apple 2.0 strategy. We concluded the quarter with highest revenue, highest conversion, highest CPC rate, and highest EBITDA and PAT to date. We delivered revenue growth of approximately 104% year on year and 80% quarter on quarter this quarter and achieved Q2 revenue CAGR of 65.7% over the last three year period, much ahead of the industry growth trend. Our CPC business noted a strong momentum delivering 48.7 million conversions during the quarter and increase of 73.3% year on year at an INR 51 CPC rate. Our growth is broad-based across our top industry verticals and from both India and international markets, powered by our ROI-linked CPQ business model and unique position in the industry. We continue to grow as a preferred mobile marketing company across global emerging markets and beyond. Our India and international contribution, historically balanced at about 50-50 each, has now shifted in favor of international on account of our successful integration of GAN in our efforts to build local on-ground presence in newer international markets. The contribution stood at about 66% international and 34% India in this quarter. Our focused execution on Apple 2.0 strategy has enabled us to drive deeper verticalization for our advertisers across the EFGH industry vertical. This has strengthened our mouth and our direct customer contribution has grown to 74% of our revenue in H1 FY2022 versus 57% in FY2020. Our consumer platform propositions, tech IP portfolio, and all our organic and inorganic investments are performing well in terms of profitable growth momentum. And we continue to establish new thought leadership benchmarks in our industry globally. We won 81 recognitions across categories and geographies in the recent App Flyer Performance Index. Apple's AppNext platform was recognized as the number one non self supporting network platform globally on retention index for Android in the non gaming category. And Apple's Jam platform was rated among the top 10 platforms globally on the Scan Index Power Ranking for iOS. Our consistent focus on R&D and tech IT creation has consistently delivered value to our customers and partners. We are thrilled to be granted three recent patent grants in the U.S., taking our total U.S. patent granted to six as on date. With 14 other patents filed and pending across jurisdictions, having many applications and use cases for 
the future. I'm incredibly proud that Apple, for the third consecutive time, won the Cognitive Enabling Technology Company of the Year at the MMA Smart East India 2021, and this was organized by the Mobile Marketing Association. This is a significant win, and this came together with seven top campaign awards for Apple's innovative mobile marketing and advertising campaign. To ensure deeper understanding and appreciation of Apple's consumer platform use cases, we have included three additional case studies in our earnings presentation showcasing the power of our platform to deliver consumer conversion and drive value for our customers. With the fundamental shift happening in consumers' lifespan towards mobile screens and connected devices, we remain optimistic of the global market opportunity and we continue our investment to enhance our market penetration. With that, I now hand over the call and discussion to our CFO, Kapil Bhutani, to discuss the financials. Thank you. Over to you, Kapil. Thanks, um, Kanish. Thanks, everyone, for joining the call. Wishing everyone a good day and hope you are keeping safe. Continuing our year on year strong growth momentum in Q2 financial year uh, 22. The company reported a revenue from operations of 2,747 million, a growth of 103.6% year on year, and sequentially on quarter two increased by 80.2% quarter on quarter. We have seen growth in revenue coming across the verticals and platforms and all geographies. Our H1 revenue stood at 4,002. 4, 172 million, a growth of 90.1% year on year. Our EBITDA for the quarter stood at 52, 50, 521 million, an increase of 51.1% year on year, and 48.6% growth quarter on quarter. The EBITDA margin stood at 19%. Our EBITDA margin is lower than the previous period on account of business combination of giant business. Going ahead, we are confident of further optimizing the business model and platform of JAM to enable margin expansion over the time. We will continue to invest in our team to deepen our market penetration and then enhance our tech capabilities. We have recently floated our employee stock option scheme and granted options to key members of the, tier of the group. The response from the team members is encouraging on the options granted. Our profit after tax for the quarter stood at 476 million, a year on year increase of 77.1%. Normalized profit after tax after adjusting gain on fair valuation of financial instrument was at 420 million, an increase of 56.3% year on year and 47% quarter on quarter. We remain focused on working capital management and continue to see robust cash flow from revenue. In this quarter, we utilized our IPO proceeds raised in 2019 for the stated purpose of working capital completely, for which we had seeked an extension from our shareholders. With this, I end my presentation. Let's please open up the floor for the questions. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. While the question queue is assembled, we will start with the question answer session from Mr. Aniket Pandey. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Janice. Congrats, uh, Anuj and I felt him on great uh, performance. I had a couple of questions actually. So, what is revenue contribution and margin profile of Jam acquisition uh, in this quarter? Hello. Yes. Sir. Hello. Shall I repeat my question? Yeah, I, I'll take this question. So we have about uh, revenue contribution of about, about 30% uh, on uh, the consolidated basis coming from JAM. 
and a uh, and a pad contribution coming about 10% more than 10 a little more than 10% uh, from jump okay so sir so, uh... Right now, is Jamstack platform fully integrated into Apple's platform? And uh, once Jamstack platform is fully uh, uh, integrated into Apple's organic platform, okay. So, will there be uh, any uh, redundancy between Jams and Apple employees who are completely engaged in uh, R&D process? And uh, uh, do you uh, expect to repurpose this? Talent and uh, realize some cost to make this comment. Hello, sorry, I I realized that my uh, my call uh, was muted for some reason. Anyway, um, I'll take that question. So the uh, integration of Jam has been successful. Uh, in the first quarter uh, and the last basically four months that, that uh, post the acquisition was completed. And we're very really, um, uh, confident that the integrations that we have done and the plans that we had prior to the acquisition are working well. Uh, consequently, what you see now within the Q2 itself, that not only have we managed to grow uh, Jam through upselling and cross-selling efforts, as well as we have managed to make it uh, achieve a profitable contribution. So Jam is still, when we acquired them, they were uh, breaking even uh, at best. And now within the first quarter, we have achieved approximately 5% uh, profitability on Jam business. Now, as Kapri mentioned that on, on revenue, the contribution is about 30%. And if that 30% of the revenue from Jam is uh, only achieving 5% profit, and, and the rest of the business of Apple on an organic basis has delivered robust uh, uh, overall continued momentum of growth, right? So just on an organic basis, we've seen uh, very strong growth, almost 34% on revenues year on year, which is ahead of the industry growth trend. And on a normalized PAD basis, 37% uh, year on year growth uh, has been realized organically. So in terms of uh, going forward, uh, even on the jam specific call that I had after the acquisition with the investors, I had mentioned that it will take us some time before we graduate jam's uh, bottom line contribution to a higher to mid teams to you know almost 20% plus in the next uh, you know one and a half to two and a half years. So you know I'm pretty confident that uh, what we have done in Q2 where jam is at 5% profit contribution for the revenue that's powered through Jam. Uh, we're already on a you know, good track and trend to build on this momentum. And as we continue to do the further integrations of certain technology components, as well as the business model enhancements, the uh, outcomes that we have as for the playbook that works well for media smart and athletes would also uh, work well in the case of Jam, and we are only getting better at it. Okay. I had one last question, sir. So last quarter you had gathered that Jam is expected to be converted to 100% CPCU pricing model. Okay. So is this process complete? If not, then uh, is there a still further scope of improving pricing for converted users for Jam? Thank you. Yes, uh, I think in terms of uh, you know upgrading the business model, I think it is fair to say that we have uh, educated all the customers and uh, also done the platform level initial changes. But in terms of driving the efficiency uh, at which that model is run, whether in terms of CPC rate pricing or with respect to the margin profile of the business, I think there is. Uh, still a lot of uh, progressive room for improvement. And the way to look at it is that if Jam is at 5% profit uh, performance in terms of the data or, or you know, bottom line uh, contribution uh, for its revenue, then our goals are very clear that within uh, this uh, financial year, with two more quarters to go, we hope to bring it up to you know uh, high single digit uh, contribution. And uh, then going forward into next year, bring it to mid teens, and then the year after, bring it you know closer to 20% plus. And that is the playbook that Apple um, 
had when we did the earlier acquisitions as well and even for them. So we will see uh, further improvement and that improvement will come with the further optimization uh, on the tech stack as well as on the business model. Um, we think that uh, the cultural integration, the business model integration, and the initial tech integration has already worked well and it is already showing in the results. So we are very encouraged by how we have done in Q2 uh, with respect to the AMP acquisition. Does that answer your question, Mr. Pandey? Yes. Fine. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Manish Bodar from Nippon, India. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, Anuj. Uh, uh, thanks for doing the call, and you know, congrats on the good set of numbers. So, uh, primarily, uh, two questions. One is, uh, if you look at, let's say, the base business X uh, jump. You know, despite, let's say, you know, uh, we were at roughly 135 crores last year, and we are now at, let's say, 190, 195 crores uh, this quarter. So, you know, but despite that, uh, the operating leverage in the business doesn't really kick in. So, probably could you hit understand, are we, are we passing out the incremental, uh, you know, pricing in terms to get more volumes, j just to get the, uh, you know, the this scale concept up here? Um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Captain. Yeah. So uh, the uh, the margins improvements, as you see, our gross margins are quite stable. Uh, despite uh, the the dip in the gross margin is reflective of the grant acquisition uh, and consolidation. Uh, otherwise, our gross margins are stable, and the finance, the leverage of the efficiency which you are seeing, which you are not seeing, is getting invested in our our. Uh, human resource to expand our markets to broaden our growth base and we will continue to invest whatever uh, leverages we are getting into expansion of the business. We have consistently maintained that Apple is a growth uh, organization and we will continue to invest in our uh, processes as well as uh, manpower to continue the growth momentum. Okay. And uh, actually, even with even with that, I think the uh, the fact that the uh, uh, normalized tax uh, growth on the one business this is 37 percent plus uh, uh, with respect to you know how we are performing, there is even with the investments in uh, growing our presence globally and planning for deeper verticalization execution across emerging markets as well as certain developed markets and certain vertices, this strategy is working really well and we are seeing expansion in EBITDA and profit on the organic basis even at the back of uh, very strong and consistent investment in our own organic uh, growth and expansion. And uh, we, uh, you know, I think the, um, the focus of the company is really on the Apple 2.0 strategy which is to move grow the business consistently for the decade ahead you know and i think the um, the foundations in terms of the tech stack the acquisition the it portfolio all of these investments are working really well and now it is being backed up further with on ground presence and you know growing our teams and capabilities uh, in those markets so that we can establish increasing market leadership across key verticals where we are very strong so it's a very consistent execution strategy, and I'm very um, happy with the way the team is responding and behaving. And with the recent stock option, uh, you know, plan, I think there's a, a lot of um, passion and spirit and pride with which the organization is executing. So I'm pretty uh, happy with the way the uh, execution on the ground is standing out across geographies. Okay. Uh, that's helpful. And just uh, one more thing. So the uh, cash on books as on date, I think, is roughly about 550 odd crores. C can you probably help me understand, let's say, uh, you know, how, how this uh, cash pool, let's say, would stand at the end of the year or let's say uh, you know, sometime next year? So uh, we would uh, organically increasing our cash flow from operations uh, uh, in this city. However, uh, if we may decide to make any further investment in expanding the business, that will be a cash out. But uh, that is uh, uh, that that cannot be uh, there cannot be a future guidance for that. 
the positively there will be an increment in cash flowing uh, into the balance sheet from the operations so uh, when is the outflow for jam expected so uh, the outflow for jam uh, the initial payment has been done uh, in the month of june and some in july uh, so the next uh, branch is due in june june 20 june 22 june 22 Yeah. And so, post that, uh, if just to just to understand better, post that our ca- cash on books would be somewhere in that or in that three hundred to three fifty crores bracket. So the next tranche is not a uh, heavy tranche. Next tranche is only uh, close to about uh, eight to ten million, in the range of eight eight million. Okay, okay, that's helpful. Thank you. So uh, if I may just add, I think fundamentally uh, the way I want uh, you all to look at Apple is that we have historically always funded our acquisitions through internally accrued cash flows, and uh, as we continue to grow our profitability and converting that into cash flow from operations, we will see that a lot of these. payments will actually get funded through the uh, operating cash flows on an ongoing basis so we should have a continuously good uh, cash position and a strong balance sheet and when the right opportunity comes we will do further investments uh, you know in organic as well as organic uh, to deliver growth so so that that's how we should look at it The next question is from the line of Devesh Mehta from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hello, am I audible? Hello. Yes, you are. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, so my question was in terms of uh, margins of the previously acquired businesses, uh, right? Starting from Media Smart, can you just give a a situation? Uh, can you just give a rough idea of how and where they are in terms of their progress of margin improvement, and also with respect to Jam, if our current uh, profitability you said is around five percent, that is on pivot level, right? Yeah. So uh, the the like I mentioned earlier in my discourse, that every acquisition that we have done. Uh, if you look at the pattern of the acquisitions that Apple has done, we have acquired companies when they were at the break-even level, or just you know just at the cusp of um, turning towards profitability, and then we have a clear path that within year one brings them to high single-digit level of profitability. Within year two of the acquisition, we go to mid-teens and as high as possible, and by the time it's year three. We want them to be at the same quality of uh, uh, unit economics that we enjoy in our organic business, uh, you know, as well. So, with respect to Media Smart as well as Appnex for any prior acquisition, whatever uh, this uh, you know phased uh, plan is to improve the bottom line contribution of these business has worked really well for us. That gave us the confidence to then continue and do a bigger transaction with Jant and a further transaction. You know, the company that's based in uh, North America, South America, and you know, much further. You know, and then the larger transaction size was backed by the fact that you know our execution on inorganic uh, and the track record is, is solid and it's inspired our confidence. Same thing we are seeing in Jant now. And uh, your question whether Jant five percent is a bit. Uh, or pad, I would say we are looking at it on both lenses. You know, we, we very granular, granularly tracking that, and it's about five percent on the beta and 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 pad. Both is not uh, very dramatically different, uh, but it's about five percent. You can you can take it as five percent of beta uh, at this moment. Um, okay. Uh, so in terms of previous acquisitions, how you have highlighted that. They are well going on track. Just to quantify it in some way, again you cannot share exact numbers, but you are looking at that Media Smart and uh, Appnex are already above like 10 to 15 percent on a pivot or a beta level, or uh, like I don't want an exact number, That's but correct. some direction side. That is correct. So that is correct. So both these acquisitions are now year two, and uh, we are aiming for mid. To high teens in terms of contribution at the bottom line level, 
and it's it's going as per plan. And that that's what I mentioned in our commentary that all our organic as well as inorganic investments are performing well in terms of profitable growth momentum. So the momentum, the trend line, all of this is uh, is doing well on you know every granular aspect that I look at uh, for our you know investment that we have done. Uh, and, and I'm really uh, confident that it's a broad-based growth happening across markets, across customer verticals, and our uh, teams are well aligned to achieve those goals. And the KPIs, our incentives, now added with the stock options, are, are keeping the entire organization and institution completely aligned to these goals. Oh, okay, so just uh, to confirm, what you're highlighting is that on a margin level, they are somewhere between 10 to 15, uh, that is right. And one last question, in terms of your expansion and other geographies, how are we uh, doing there? Have there been any inroads and any qualitative word on any big client entity or anything where we can see that, okay, this year, any qualitative commentary in terms of uh, us getting into some big clients or something which we can see on Apps Flyer uh, to get an idea how we are progressing on that front? So, so I think the qualitative aspect can be seen uh, with the fact that we are having our key platforms uh, and tracking and consolidated achieving, you know, uh, very strong uh, recognition, whether it's, uh, you know, the industry indexes or whether it is the industry awards, uh, the kind of campaigns, customers uh, getting the, the wins and accolades consistently as well as indicated qualitatively in the uh, case studies that we have shared. So in the last um, earnings presentation, we have shared three case studies. This time we have added three additional case studies to give you a much clearer qualitative sense of what's happening on the platform, what are the capabilities that Apple has, how are the customers benefiting, and you know, so we, are, we are trying to ensure that you build a deeper appreciation of what is fundamentally happening at Apple uh, beyond just you know financial numbers and so on. So I think there is a consistent effort from our side to ensure that our investors deeply appreciate and understand uh, the power of our platform and how we are doing across emerging markets and not just India. You know, the Indonesia case studies were shared, Malaysia uh, case studies were shared, and I think progressively we are also looking at uh, the planning of the annual day, which will come soon, that we can share more insights into more markets. But you know, very broad-based growth. The verticalization strategy is working, and um, it's really strengthening our mode and building our confidence to go ahead and invest into people on ground present in those markets. We will only do that when we are absolutely sure. So, you know, when it, all our investments are done very prudently, whether they are organic or inorganic. So, the fact that we are investing in global expansion to those markets is a very strong indicator that things are working well. Our platform is delivering, our strategies are working, and therefore we are investing to grow and scale deeper in um, multiple geographies. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arun Prashant from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I hope I'm audible. So uh, the first question is on... Uh, on the recent uh, case filed against uh, Google by a, a group of uh, interested parties in Texas, where it is alleged that, uh, that the Google's demand side platform has unfair advantage and uh, and it engaged in anti-competitive practices. So, uh, in the context of India, what is your current opinion on this issue? If, if you could elaborate a little bit on this, and then, and as a follow-up to that question. Assuming that the, the level playing field is created as a result of this litigation, can you explain this scenario by taking us through, say, an hypothetical campaign where uh, some where someone like Apple, how, how it can benefit from this uh, favorable outcome? Sure. Uh, I think I will take the opportunity to share with all the uh, members of the call that Apple has a 16 years of history in this ecosystem focused exclusively on mobile marketing. Unlike other companies, I could say that we haven't really pivoted or needed to pivot. The mobile marketing uh, has been an anchoring focus and you know, consistent vision of the company till now. 
and the ecosystem has gone through tremendous changes and adaptations over the 50 years right from when we started uh, it was before google had acquired android before apple had launched anything on the iphone and uh, nokia was king and blackberry was cool apple was still doing mobile marketing we saw a massive change with the, uh, the touch screen form factor of devices and you know we, we all know that you know a lot of uh, changes have happened in the ecosystem but apple has maintained a very very strong execution track record to maneuver through various changes and the entrepreneurial culture that we have keeping ahead with tech innovation consistently has really helped us to maneuver through any kinds of changes. In the last uh, five to six years, we have seen data privacy coming in Europe and GDPR uh, in Singapore, for the data protection act in the next few years, we'll see that as well. And uh, most recently, you know, there, there was nervousness around iOS uh, 14 and related policies, and we have shown that we were uh, we had the foresight to do the jump acquisition. Uh, we knew that there were some of the things that they and we were working on that can be leveraged uh, in order to make a head start into the new sort of iOS 14 territory. And our jam platform has consequently seen that integration as a top 10 global platform on scan networks. What I'm trying to establish is that based on Apple's historical credentials, you can see that we have a very strong track record of maneuvering through uh, any changes that are happening at the ecosystem level. Now, with respect to Google and Facebook, Apple's view is that we operate in an ecosystem where we are still biopic. We are not head-on competing or uh, fighting against Google or Facebook. On the contrary, we in fact integrate our tech stack on Google Facebook so that we see it as a platform where we can find consumer audiences and drive conversions for our customers from their uh, touch points as well. So I am uh, very neutral to what happens exactly whether you know Google uh, and Facebook or platforms like that will see any further clipping of wings by regulation or these checks and balances of you know how much they have or they don't have. My long term view is that the non Google Facebook um, part of the ecosystem will continue to grow at least as far with the total digital advertising growth, if not much better, uh, you know, over time. And that's to do with the fact that I think that the advertisers have um, over allocated their budget on Google and Facebook so far and there is a lot more competent platforms with complementing capabilities that can drive higher ROI and value for the advertisers over time. So we will see uh, that all of these platforms will continue to grow but the non-Google Facebook part in my opinion should grow faster uh, uh, for multiple multiple factors and um, specific to what's happening in India let's wait for the outcomes of you know, these uh, cases and so on, and we, we are equally watching it with interest and preparing ourselves for all opportunities and possibilities. Uh, uh, that, that is very helpful, Anuj, uh, but I, I just wanted to specifically understand how much of our currently, say, our performance or our growth rates uh, would be uh, different if, if the, this level playing field is already there, uh, if you can take a wild guess. Uh, the way I look at it is that, uh, you know, the average industry growth rate in India for digital should be in the range of 25 to 30% CAGR for the next several years to come. That is all in comparison, right? Facebook, Google, everything is in that. And I believe that Apple will continue to grow better, hopefully, than the average industry growth trend. The last several years already show that the CAGR growth of our Q2 revenue is 65.7 percent over the last three years. You know, and even if we slice and dice into jam versus non-jam, we still will find it as a very fantastic growth trend. So, I think we're already doing very well. Can we can continue to do as well? I'm very confident, bullish about it. Can we up it further and improve it further? Let's wait and see. You know, let's not. Um, uh, you know, simulate the scenarios that have not happened entirely, but I think even if the status quo stays, I think we will continue to do better than the average industry growth rate, hopefully. And if the status quo shifts in favor of non Google and Facebook, of course, we will take advantage of that. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishit from Nepal, India. Please go ahead. Rishit, you may please go ahead with your question. As there is no response from the current participant, we take the next question from the line of Sanjay Lata from MG Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. <coughs> Hello. Go ahead with your question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, very good set of numbers, sir. Uh, just wanted to uh, ask a question. Like, in the previous interaction, you have mentioned that in inventory and data cost would be in the range of 55 to 58 percent of the sales. While in this quarter and half year, this ratio has increased. Can you throw some light on how should we look this ratio going forward? And why there is so increase in inventory and data cost, and what are our strategy for the same going ahead? Um, could I take this one? Please go ahead, Sir. So, uh, as you would have seen in our other presentation, uh, we have consolidated the uh, dance uh, business in the Apple to the business is consolidated in Nancy. And uh, the dance acquisition commentary, which was uh, Paul, which was done early in June and July, the, the margins on the jam business was are, are significantly lower on the gross margins than what Apple earned. So there is an impact of four to five basis points coming in uh, overall. Uh, impact is coming on only from jam. If I see excluding jam. My, I made uh, this point in my earlier answer also. There is no impact on the gross margins on the, uh, the non jam business of the company. So we, we have in, in fact increased uh, a, a, a one uh, basis point, uh, sorry, 100 basis points uh, over the uh, last year's performance on the uh, gross margin uh, in the organic business. So, sir, how should we look going forward with this ratio? So, in like suppose in coming two to three quarters, this ratio can be come down to 50, 58 percent, or this will be elevated. It will not. It will not improve in next two to three quarters, as we as I was mentioned uh, previously. Also, uh, it will take. Uh, it will improve uh, from here. But uh, to say that it will come down to what uh, Apple uh, try to grant the position in next two three quarters, uh, it will not be. Yes, we will try to improve uh, the uh, the business model to an extent that we 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 in a say uh, four to five quarters of uh, or maybe six quarters down the line we may come down to close to what we were overall business that including the jam business. The next question is from the line of Mayang Babla from the Lalan Brosha. Please go ahead. So you may please go ahead with your question. As there is no response from the current participant, we take the next question from the line of Alisha Mahavala from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning, and thank you for taking my question. Um, sir, I'd just like to understand that our average CPCU um, has been in the range of 40 to 41 rupees, and this quarter it has uh, spiked to 50 rupees plus. Just wanted to understand uh, the reason behind the same. Sure. Uh, typically, the uh, CPCU uh, is uh, balanced based on the function of uh, business contributions in India and international markets. International markets typically have a slightly higher CPC rate uh, compared to what we would see in India. And this quarter, because our contribution for international business is higher, consequently the CPC rate average uh, has gone up to uh, to the level that we're seeing now. And we believe that uh, we can sustain this level of contribution. And as the Indian international mix uh, stabilizes, we see the CPC stabilizing. As we improve the uh, verticalization strategy across the newer markets that we are executing, we will have capability to also improve the CPC rate further. And, uh, and, and you know, we will provide progressive, uh, you know, explanations on that uh, as any shift happens. So, but for now, 
the reason you see it is that until now it was hovering at around 40 rupees to 42 rupees. Now it's gone about 50 rupees. Uh, the function contributing to that is that there is a higher contribution of international uh, business and therefore the average is moving up at this moment. And I expect it to, to hover around this and then uh, improve it further progressively with our verticalization strategy and executing deeper within the international organizations. Understood. That was well explained. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that while you had mentioned earlier in the call that contribution from India and international used to be 50-50 and now is tilting in favor of international, where do we expect this mix to sort of stabilize, like you said, you know, once verticalization and full integration of Jampic sector takes place? Are we saying it will be this 63-33 or are we saying it will be 70-30 or any other number? It's hard to uh, give that uh, specifically, but you know, I, will, uh, I will certainly say that India is our home ground, it's our home market, and uh, I would expect it to continue to contribute around 30% plus uh, to our business. We are the single largest uh, contributing market. And then uh, the international business, as uh, you already know, it's about 66% now, but because the number of markets and geographies that uh, we will continue to invest further into and grow, we will see a higher addressable uh, market size in the international business, while India will continue to, you know, be, you know, the anchoring uh, market for us. And a lot of our innovations and strategies are uh, almost always first rolled out in India, uh, whether it's the connected TV product, whether it is the uh, connected household IDs or whether it is the uh, omni-channel platforms, we see, you know, uh, our emphasis on executing deeply in India, be it a vernacular strategy or verticalization. So, I mean, a lot of our, our focus on India execution is is, uh, is disproportionately high. And the teams on the ground which are looking at India, they are 100% focused only on India. And the teams that are looking at other international geographies, we're also bringing market-specific execution focus on those geographies so that we can, there's no dilution of focus happening in terms of depth of execution, uh, be it on India or Southeast Asia or Middle East Africa or Japan or the vertical, uh, verticalized focus in, in developed markets as well. So, so we are very clear about our execution strategy and this uh, contribution will be a function of how you know, business expansion continues to happen. But for now, I think you can say that you know this um, it should over in the range of uh, 30 plus percent per year. Understood. Understood. Sure. Um, so my next question is with respect to converted users. We see very strong Q1, Q1 and YOY growth uh, if you look at full year basis or even if you look at uh, track it on quarterly basis. Just wanted to understand where is this growth coming from? Is this simply expanding into newer geographies or now that you know we have some proof of concept and foot in the door, we're getting more business from the same clients? Any uh, color you can share on the same? Sure. See, the, uh, first and foremost, the macro factors in the industry will continue to be very favorable. It is a active sales event for you know growth of this uh, business model of converted uh, users because more and more users, at least in emerging markets, are going on to uh, you know becoming uh, online shoppers for all kinds of lifestyle products and services across industry verticals. So the consumer trend is very very strong, and I think it's a multi-year trend, COVID has accelerated it and, you know, we need to expect that to continue because once people are hooked on to digital, uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a trend that stays and it continues to accelerate. So that's one. Then in terms of the advertisers, the industry verticals that we are working on and the clear strategy and verticalization that we're seeing increasingly direct advertisers working with us for almost 74% of our revenues this strategy is working very well on a broad basis across, you know, the top verticals contributing over 90% of the revenues. And then within those verticals, we see existing customers, new customers, and, you know, our sales teams, and we are consistently pushing for growth uh, on those parameters. And this is happening across geos. You know, it's happening for us in India. It's happening for us across international markets. So it's a, what gives me uh, great confidence is that the growth is very broad-based. 
it is not that oh, suddenly one customer has become really big or one particular contract has become really big. It's a very broad based growth coming across verticals, across geography, from existing and new customers, and that is uh, you know, really sustainable, in, in my opinion. I think the, the engine of growth is working and the momentum is strong. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayank Babla from Dalal and Brocha. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for taking my question. Sorry, I was on mute earlier. Uh, uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. I know Jen Kapil, sir. Uh, very good execution. Uh, I had three questions uh, primarily. Uh, one was, uh, if you could uh, give the, uh, uh, categorically give the uh, converted users in the organic business and what was the contribution from JAMP in the org uh, converted users this time? That was one. Okay. All right. So I think the uh, contribution for the AMP on converted user basis is, is not something that you know we have published in our earnings report. But it would suffice to say that international markets, the CPCU rates are higher, and con and the number of conversions is not so high, right? So I mean, this is in terms of the math of it, and in terms of uh, you know the uh, contribution from organic business is more than eighty percent. Uh, Actually, close to hovering close to 90% uh, is coming from organic business conversions, and you know, 10% and less than 20% coming from the inorganic. The, um, the the focus of the company uh, as we go forward will continue to be on the converted uh, uh, and conversion-based ROI-focused business model uh, as we execute and expand our business across the board, and we are seeing the very strong uptick uh, of this business model. And what has really uh, encouraged us is that we are able to execute on this uh, business model even on uh, certain verticals in developed markets on iOS as well. And I think that is extremely encouraging and, uh, and, and something to be um, looking forward to as we continue to scale and expand. Sure. So, uh, okay, thank you for that. My second question is uh, regarding Jamp itself. So, sir, we've seen a, a strong growth in this uh, quarterly run rate, while uh, CY20, the annual run rate of Jamp was around $29.5 million, which roughly converts into uh, 545 million rupees. Uh, this time, the uh, contribution, as you said, was 30% of revenue, which is around uh, 800 million, roughly 800 million rupees. So, I, my question to you was, uh, what uh, is this a normalized uh, growth rate, or what what is a normalized run rate that we can, uh, or uh, you know, assume uh, so that we can get a sense on the uh, future uh, earnings? So let me answer that qualitatively for you first so that we can understand what is happening much better uh, from a ground execution perspective. Uh, prior to the acquisition, Zam was in a tough spot. Uh, they were not profitable, uh, certainly not cash flow positive, and they were therefore playing on the back foot. There was COVID impact uh, across a lot of their markets and key customers of theirs were uh, you know, down because of uh, COVID, you know, there's a lot of their uh, sort of uh, customers were on on demand services, you know, food delivery, tax levy, you know, when things were really shut down in some of the markets, in some of the quarters, they, they had a bad time. And therefore, from a management execution mindset, it was a survival mode. Uh, or if I may call it, you know, from a cricket analogy, playing on the back foot just to keep the kids in hand, you know, and not really trying to go a lot of runs, you know. So I think they, they were just on the back foot. Uh, with the acquisition, I think we have been able to bring the entrepreneurial culture on the forefront, the growth mindset, the go ahead and get the business, and, let, and, and the fact that they are back in the line by the... Um, you know, there's the, the cash in the bank ground of the company, the, uh, the, the baggage of dealing with uh, conflicted interests of all kinds of investors they have in the cash. So all that is gone. Now it's just Apple. There is uh, money in the bank and there is clarity of direction. And so think of it from a very defensive play to keep the wicked to actually, you know, let's go and score. And, and, and that is what, what has changed. And I think the, that's when I say the cultural integration has worked well. The, uh, 
uh, financial integration has worked well. I mean, we've got the uh, audits and compliances achieved uh, within you know very short span within the first quarter across geographies uh, and so on. Uh, and the uh, tech integration has also worked well, which is leading to you know, uh, better sell to rate, better extraction of budgets from the customers because now you're going and proposing a broader set of capabilities and so on. And then we are consequently seeing the uh, impact on uh, uh, on profitability as well. So I think there is there is growth on all fronts, including growth on uh, team costs. So we are investing. I mean, in the case of Jan, the, the team has grown and we have really shown them the growth path. And profitable growth momentum is the key word. Uh, and so continuing to grow uh, is important. So what you're seeing now is the is let's say the, the correct reflection of where the business should have been. Uh, and if you look at calendar year 20, uh, had they had better funding, more clear strategy, then they would have probably done better in that year. So we had analyzed all of that, and when we acquired the business, uh, the thesis was clear that you know how we will turn it around by bringing additional scale growth. Better business model, better pricing efficiencies, and then you know one step at a time improve its profitability. Now, where it is now, I would want to focus on enhancing its profitability metrics versus just scaling with the five percent contribution on you know the time back. Uh, this is uh, you know this is something the priorities are clear. Get the unit economics to a better place. And, and, and of course, continue to scale, but um, the priority number one is get the unit economics right. So I'm not giving you any guidance of you know, con continuous growth momentum, and if we over-deliver on that, that's something to celebrate. I think the focus and priority on execution is clear. Improve the unit economics and, and scale sensibly through internally accrued positive cash flows that are generated in the business. Uh, and, and I think that's the best way to answer it at the moment. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants, please limit your question to one per participant. You may rejoin the question queue if you have a follow-up. The next question is from the line of Ruchi Burde from BAP Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, congratulations uh, to the team uh, for the excellent set of uh, numbers. Um, I have questions, um, uh, starting with uh, the IUS uh, policy changes. I know this forum has discussed it a lot, but trust me, we get a lot of questions on this. So, Anuj, uh, in uh, US, uh, with the IUS policy changes, we saw a very uh, diverse uh, impact on the businesses of digital advertisers there, uh, wherein the Android ecosystem benefited a lot uh, uh, with uh, in terms of rate uh, increases. Did you also experience the same uh, uh, in comments on that? I'll make uh, two comments on this. One, that Apple is really strongly anchored on emerging markets, which consequently makes us uh, very strong on Android. And secondly, uh, the, the fact that we had done the acquisition of Jamf and the timing of the acquisition, if you, if you look back, it's around the time when iOS 14 is being rolled out, and we said we want to take the opportunity head on and grow in that segment at the back of our credentials that as Apple Group, we're very strong in Android. Now, when the, when the advertisers became shaky on, okay, what's going to happen on iOS and so on, they're looking for partners who are very strong in Android, and we came out, hey, we are the you know, strong players from emerging markets and Android, choose us, select us, plus we have now on down presence in, uh, in North America, the iOS 14 impact is really the strongest. And we had differentiated capabilities that we rolled out for the advertisers to, to give them confidence on both fronts. That, hey, as an advertiser, you want to reach out to consumers broadly and drive ROI. They were shaking an iOS where we came with some innovation and said, hey, we have something for you here. And, and if they were thinking that they were shaking on iOS and they were shifting any budget to Android, then again, they put all that and said, yes, Android, this is our home ground, you know, from emerging markets. I think it really worked to our advantage. And this is what I was saying earlier. Whenever a change happens, which is an ecosystem level change, the organizations that have entrepreneurial agility and culture, the organizations who have tech innovation bag capabilities, which are uh, preemptive in nature, and we're always investing ahead. You know, we're not reacting that something has happened and we quickly scramble to come up with something. We're always investing ahead. And both those combinations with clear execution focus, you know, is 
is the way that Apple has maneuvered and made the most of this opportunity. We have benefited on Android and we have also benefited on iOS. Uh, and, and that is shown in the results. And that's where uh, some of the people who were underscoring and undercalibrating that felt that, hey, this is uh, overperformance. But, you know, I think this is the right level of performance based on uh, the execution strategies we put in place. That's really great to hear. Um, uh, 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 I know, I mean, uh, we are predominantly uh, Android, uh, uh, we operate in Android uh, dominated market. But even if you uh, look at, I mean, um, uh, subset in India also, uh, the iOS would make up, if not more, at least a uh, low double uh, digit uh, number a mix. So if you look in your uh, device set, uh, how was your experience for the iOS devices uh, in the last quarter? Uh, was did you see any drop in the efficacy of uh, your platform, especially for the iOS devices, or uh, 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 it wasn't material? Uh, so I wouldn't say that uh, the change was in material. I think uh, the industry has seen that the change is material. But what is uh, but, but, but with that material change, there are some fundamentals of our industry that won't change, right? I mean, the advertisers' budget did not shrink. Uh, the advertisers' budget going to digital is only increasing. Now, whether it is going to Android or iOS or it's going to Google, Facebook or not, I mean, it's all round growth, right? In terms of advertisers wanting to spend on digital to connect with consumers, that macro trend is a pillar of strength because the demand for digital advertising from the businesses, small and large across verticals and markets, is very, very strong. Next is the consumer trend. The consumer who is still using the iOS device is still a valuable consumer for, and the consumer is going to do conversions from the mobile phone. Whether this way or that way, the consumers are also deeply married to their devices. And so these two sides of the ecosystem, on one side the advertisers, budgets are there, on the other side consumers are not leaving the screen. You know, then the rest of it is technical execution. That all oh, this has changed, you know, you've got to adapt and, uh, and, and make it happen. And I think what we've seen is that those who are able to adapt are rising faster. Those who are not able to adapt uh, will scramble through and adjust uh, hopefully in time. And, and I think for us, uh, you know, like I mentioned, we've benefited on both sides, on iOS as well as on Android. And I'm pretty confident that um, we'll continue to improve and execute better going forward. So, so the nervousness or risk around the change is behind us because we have, you know, crossed that hurdle with strong outcomes, and then I think that brings confidence because we're seeing customers across the uh, world. It's, it's a huge booster in our own conviction of where we are headed. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on great thread of number. Uh, most of my question has been answered. Just one or two uh, things I would like to clarify. Uh, first of all, uh, you you explained well on the uh, jam, uh, you know what kind of outlook and uh, uh, thinking we should have. But from a more sustainable point of view, uh, given the kind of market it is playing, and with uh, with the cultural shift that you spoke about, uh, what are the ideal uh, you know range of growth way uh, it should aspire for? Because the market opportunity uh, could be a little different compared to what we have that 25-30% kind of a mindset uh, at the corporate level. Uh, so any any input on that would be of help. Sure. Um, so the underlying uh, assessment uh, for any acquisition that Apple does, uh, and this is our internal sort of assessment, and I'm sharing that with you so that not only does it apply to Jam or our earlier acquisitions, but also in future, if we do any acquisition, the playbook is very clear. One, we will only acquire those businesses that we believe we can continue to build and grow with the kind of growth momentum that we expect from Apple overall, uh, which is to beat the industry growth trend. And the 25 to 30% CATR growth that we have seen on a broad basis for digital advertising, we expect every part of our business to grow that way. That's one. Secondly, we expect to turn around the acquired businesses where they are breaking even or struggling to make them profitable 
over this period of time and for that we give ourselves about 2 to 3 years to bring them to a high team or you know 20% plus a bit of kind of a uh, margin performance over that period of time now so, so earlier we were talking about jam from bottom line perspective and now we are asking about jam from a top line growth perspective and there uh, let's say one year give us one year plus to make sure the unit economics leads to a level where the growth is organically funded through profitable cash flows and we need to solve the unit economics on priority number 1 and then the next priority comes where we get to the same level of linear growth rate for the future uh, which should be uh, hopefully at least 20% if not higher and then grow to 25 30% we are for the longer term uh thank you just last one question uh one uh, uh from your uh, capital that you have available uh, a significant part of it uh, uh so are uh, are we at a point given the stability of you know uh, in the jam uh, integration process uh, that we are ready for uh, a big acquisition if it comes our way that is point one second uh, uh in the stand alone operations in this uh, quarter we have seen significant jump in the inventory and data cost uh, uh 25% uh so is it because uh, we might have some optimization in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, booking this uh, cost at a uh, enterprise level in the stand alone operation uh, or is it uh, only relevant for the stand alone revenues thank you okay so i think for your uh, uh, first question uh, with respect to uh, bandwidth whether it is financial bandwidth to pursue another acquisition or management bandwidth to pursue another acquisition let me assure you that uh, the acquisition of jam has only increased our management bandwidth and capability not to zoom their entanglement the uh, the quality of the management team of jam is strong uh, you know the top leadership and the depth of it is, is strong and the fact that we now have a very strong management team that's aligned with us for the long term in those policies is actually a big advantage of the acquisition uh, and and therefore the ability for us to do any acquisition whether in terms of financial bandwidth or in terms of management bandwidth that is strong having said that uh, we are very very prudent uh, with respect to the acquisitions that we do uh, the investments that we do and we have learned over time that you know there is you know doing a wise and carefully calibrated acquisition is more important than just doing one so there is no undue pressure or stress that hey there's cash sitting there better do something or you have bandwidth so why don't you do something if we find the right target i assure you we will do it and uh, finding the right target has many many factors that one has to see and we will carefully calibrate it so there's no short term or medium term guidance to this but the readiness is there and the capability is there the options are there and you know we will choose the right time to do it so that's one the second part of your question for frankly stand alone and call i think quite understand kapil if you have understood can you answer that so i will uh, i will take this question uh, you uh, you are comparing the the decline in the cost on a sequential basis in stand alone i would request if you compare it on buy and buy basis because every quarter has its own nuances and variability of the inventory and the cost associated with it so uh, your comparison is sequential uh, i would request if you can compare it with the bio wise september stand alone you will find that the matrix is in that uh, hello can i answer your question thank you before we take the next question a reminder to the participants please limit your question to one per participant The next question is from the line of Sumit Joxi from Indus Equity. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, thank you. So my commendations to you, Mr. Karna Som, and the rest of the team on an excellent set of numbers. Uh, so I'll just limit my question to one, and it's slightly elaborate. So do bear with me. Now this pertains to Apple's future growth narrative. so far uh, the company has been largely focused on you know visual advertising as a medium but today what we are seeing is advertising purely through voice based mediums is growing as well and uh, we see for example spotify provides voice based ads in its free version prior to song streaming 
and you're also seeing conversational e-commerce purchasing itself is growing extremely rapidly. So bearing this in mind, do you foresee this is a business opportunity for Apple? Uh, is this something you all believe you all can address to your R&D capabilities? And would it be fair to say that the Apple 2.0 strategy could accommodate a third V besides verticalization and vernacular in the form of voice? Uh, this alludes largely also on the banks of your podcast base IP. So if you could just share some uh, flavor on that, that would be great. Well, that's a great question, and thanks for the, your uh, references to our 2B strategy of Apple 2.0, as well as our voice-based podcast kitchen that we've got in the U.S. market. Uh, it's absolutely right that this is a growth opportunity for us, uh, where we look at uh, connected households and connected devices. So here I'm just elaborating to give you a vision and a, or, a, uh, or a very human sense of how consumers and all of us will behave uh, going forward, our households will have voice-based devices, our uh, wearable devices will also have voice commands, you know, we'll be changing the lights and the fan speeds and the air con turn off and all that. Home automation is, is going to happen over the next several years. Uh, our cars will have these capabilities and, and so on and so forth. So, while the mobile device and the connected TV device will continue to be strong visually-led devices, and will form a big part of the uh, consumer experience for next so three to five years. There will be increasing number of wearable devices, home automation connected devices that will come, where the interactions would be different, where we would be listening to it, or we will be giving visual commands to it, or when we are listening to something, for example, if you're listening to music. Now, I mean, none of us would necessarily want to you know, interrupt that experience by having an ad play in between the songs. You know, whether you're listening to a Bajan or a Bollywood or a Hollywood or a, you know, whatever kind of music that you may love or like, you don't want a sudden out-of-context audio ad playing in between, right? There will be components of visual advertising uh, together with the voice-based experiences and uh, integrated experiences will come. And the... Uh, uh, and one of the ways to deal with it, for example, you're driving a car and you see something on the screen, you listen to something with your ears, neither can you touch it, nor do you want to interrupt by speaking it because there's another audio playing. So using gestures to then do a command to say I'm interested in something, or yeah, I like this, let's keep it for later, I'll look into it, or using some smart gestures. And I think those are the kind of use cases and consumer behavior use cases that Apple has already done research on, has patent on, a patent that's only granted, which which uh, I think is a clear indicator that not only are we giving lip service to future trends, we are investing into them and we are building competitive mode on that preemptively before these become big market opportunities. The fact that we already launched our connected TV, connected household initiatives last year in India is indicative of that because the market is clearly very, very nascent. But, you know, we have already launched products, invested in that. So we are ahead of the curve and we are excited about these possibilities. But next three to five years, I can assure you, visual ads is not going anywhere. It's only going to continue to grow. And voice will be nascent, small, but, uh, you know, an exciting space. And, and we love to be in exciting spaces. That's what we like about our industry. And we will definitely uh, continue to see that as an opportunity and build IP uh, in that area. So yes, the third B, uh, you could say is voice, so, you know, vernacular, verticalization, voice, and the um, fourth B, already we have a case study, video ads, and so on. So there is, we, we are uh, holistic in our thinking and, and our strategy. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'll just, you know, quickly ask one follow-up. Uh, I'm cognizant that we should be asking only one, but uh, just, you know, regards with regards to your new patents, which you all did file in the USA regarding the blockchain IP for fraud detection and the podcast-based IP. Do you see this bringing in revenue anytime soon, or uh, could you give some sense on that? See, uh, I want you to, and all investors to know that uh, IP and patent, these are foundational blocks of any tech innovative company. And these are strong indicators about the future of the company. What is it that you know we have IP for? What are we building? What is Apple investing in? What are the directional things that are happening? And you, you see that. And then why do we go and apply it in US? You know, I mean, because US is one market where these IPs are 
most valuable i mean this, this is one of the largest markets in the world so even though we are not necessarily you know on the ground executing on make sure our ip and innovations are recognized registered over there because that's where it is most valuable and of course uh, you know we can then command uh, uh, revenue possibilities over time over there so it's, it's lesser about immediate revenue and uh, financial it's more about strategic long term sustainable growth direction of the company and reflecting the culture of the organization you know that we are creating and we have we are inventors first then we are entrepreneurs so we invent new things then we go and execute and commercialize it as entrepreneurs and then we execute for scale and growth and market leadership and top leadership so those are the steps and uh, the uh, the people that we have uh, applied whether granted or not are indicative of that it is also defensive strategy Uh, where you know some of the larger companies who have patents they sometimes try to muscle out or you know throw patent balls at uh, you know companies to 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 keep them out and we want to make sure that we can neutralize that by having our own uh, set of patent portfolio to, to to counter that you know when that happens it also works as a deterrent uh, in case somebody goes you know anti us on some patent we can counter that back and say look on your home ground we have all these patents so better watch out we don't uh, So, so there is uh, the forward-looking foundational strategy uh, in the IT uh, portfolio, and there's also defensive uh, strategy in the IT portfolio, and we cover both grounds uh, with what we have done. So it's not just about you know short-term what happens to revenue and profit with that. I think it is uh, it's a decade-long view for us uh, for Apple to point to the strategy, and this is how you should see IT and patent related uh, updates from us. Understood. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, due to paucity of time, we take that as the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for their closing comments. Well, thank you so much for um, joining the call today. I would like to congratulate all our shareholders and also for those who are interested in evaluating the, uh, Apple uh, as an as an investment. That you know this Q2 uh, uh, result is a landmark. Performance and is deeply anchored and a validation of our entrepreneurial culture, tech innovation, and continuous execution focus on the Apple 2.0 strategy. So, looking forward to you know uh, updating you more as we progress in the next two quarters of this financial year. All the best and take care. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Prabhu Das Leelaadar, we conclude today's conference. Thank you all for joining. You may now disconnect your lines.